Oh, but it barely works. So it's a network. Uh, it's new, but does it connect to the four computers sitting in our room? Sometimes. Do your best. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Oh, nice. Okay. Kidding. <laughs> All right. As you just heard today, President Biden is taking further action to lower gas prices and promote energy security. When Putin's war sent gas prices up, President Biden made clear he would do everything in his power to lower prices for American families. And he's been delivering. Gas prices fell at the fastest rate in over a decade this summer. They've dropped almost every week since June and are down by $1.16 per gallon on average. Now, President Biden announced additional actions uh, to strengthen energy security, address the supply chain, and lower costs. He is releasing 15 million barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to be delivered in December. He is directing the Department of Energy to be ready to move forward with additional releases of oil this winter if needed. And he announced that the administration intends to repurchase oil for the SPR when prices are around $70 per gallon. He's also calling on oil and gas companies to pass on their savings to consumers at the pump. Right now, right behind me, uh, you see this chart. chart. Uh, the profit that energy companies are making in every gallon of gas is a gasoline is about double what it is typically is at this time of year. And you see that between the crude oil and the retail gasoline prices there in the lines. The retailer margin over the refinery price is more than 40 percent over the typical level. These outsized industry profits margins are adding more than 60 cents to the average price of gallon of gas and keeping prices higher higher than they should be. This is unacceptable. And lastly, as you know, in a, in a few minutes, the president's going to be uh, making another announcement and new, new actions to boost electric vehicle battery production and ensure that we have the critical minerals we need to keep building, building them right here in America. The president's economic agenda has generated an American electric vehicle manufacturing boom. Today's announcement will further that progress through the bipartisan infrastructure law. The Department of Energy will award $2.8 billion in grants to expand domestic manufacturing of batteries for electric vehicles and the electric grid. The president will also announce the American Battery Material Initiative a new effort to mobilize the entire government in securing a reliable and sustainable supply of electric minerals used for power, electricity, and EVs. The president will be joined at today's announcement by Energy Secretary uh, Granholm and executives from leading battery companies. With that, Josh, welcome back. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. I, I know. Well, oh, I goodness. think last time was Air Force One on the way to Hagerstown. Two, oh. two breaks. That's that's an eternity. <laughs> what trip? <laughs> um, so, so uh, two questions. Uh, the president just said that the oil releases from the Strategic Reserve were not political. 
But we've seen on a daily basis that the administration is making these announcements on abortion, gas prices, EV, student debt, and an array of other programs such as infrastructure. What's the goal of these announcements, given that they're happening so close to midterms? Look, and the president was asked specifically that that question on, on the gas prices in our announcement today, and he was very clear. He said, if you've watched him these last several months, these last four months, I believe that what, is what he said, he's been working every day to lower gas prices uh, for the American people, especially after we saw uh, Putin's uh, brutal war in Ukraine, which led to Putin's price price hike, hike, as we have seen in the last several several months. So he has made it very clear. He wanted to make sure that we lower the prices uh, for the American people. We have seen, we've seen independent uh, analysis, uh, and analysts have said the, the actions that this president took, this historic action that the president took has worked. And so he's going to continue to deliver. And when you, you, you're asking me about the abortion and Roe, Roe was decided in June. And because that happened and understanding, the president understanding what that would mean for millions of women across the country, he took action. He took, he took executive action. He's going to continue to speak to it. And he has been very clear clear that in order to actually codify Roe, uh, the American people have to make their voices heard. And so the president is not going to shy away from delivering for the American people. He's not going to shy away from, from a record that you all have seen for the past 20 months. That is just that, an economic policy, economic plans, economic legislation, and now laws that is working for the middle class. Gotcha. And then on the announcement today, a year ago, uh, the president said after the G20 that 335 a gallon hurt families. When he took office, gas was 240 a gallon. What does the administration think is a reasonable price for gasoline such that it could end withdrawals and kind of allow the, the reserves to replenish? So first of all, he's taking this action. We know that gas prices are going down, but they're still too high. Uh, and he acknowledges that, and that's why we're continuing taking the work to bring those prices down. And that is the promise that he's made uh, the American people. I know people have asked, what is the sufficient, uh, what is the sufficient the level, right, uh, uh, in order uh, to make that, to, to make, a, uh, to be at a point where we feel that the supply is where it needs to be. Look, the supply has to meet demand, right? We just had this chart that laid out uh, what was the stark differences that we're seeing uh, with cost when it's 60 cents more, uh, we are saying to oil companies, they need to make sure that uh, the the, uh, the profits that they're making, that also uh, the uh, the everyday Americans feel, feel get that relief, relief as well. And so really, we're trying to make sure that supply meets demand. That's what the president is trying to do. And he uses uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, where he taps into it, to say, which, as you know, which is a historic decision. That's what the, 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 the Strategic Petroleum Reserve are for. They are for these moments. These global challenges, these global market challenges that we're seeing, because, uh, in particular, because of this uh, Putin's war. Thanks, Karen. Um, in the 15 million barrels of oil the president talked about today, it, it's when you put that in the context, Americans consume an average of nearly 20 million barrels of oil a day. So, for the actual impact of this announcement, when could Americans actually expect to see results of this when they're filling up at the gas station? So today's, today's announcement is about responding to the effects of Putin's ongoing war. And that's why the president took this action, because it's still continuing. Putin's brutal war on Ukraine is still ongoing, as I just said. It completes the release of the 180 million, 180 million barrels the president announced earlier this year. And as you heard from the president just now, he's directing the Department of Energy to be ready to release additional barrels of oil should conditions warrant it. And so we've seen the impacts. We've seen the impacts already. Again, and I, I just said this to, to Josh, we have seen independent analysts say that the work or the work that this president has taken when it comes to this historic decision with the, uh, the strategic petroleum reserve has we have seen some of the effects we have seen gas prices uh, go down uh, so again the president's going to do everything that he can uh, to make sure that uh, we uh, we make the lives of American families a little bit easier
but you couldn't say a timeline of, you know, by saying this today and happening in December of when there's actually an impact for American consumers and pocketbooks of when people might feel this. So again, we're, we are already seeing uh, the impact on consumers, but what the president is saying is that the prices are already too high. And so we want to make sure that the supply out there meets the demand, and that is not what's happening. And, and just one more, sorry, on restocking the reserve when it hits $70 a barrel, oil's trading at around $83 a barrel today. What makes the president confident you'll be able to buy back oil at that level? So the release of the oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve was always meant to be a, a bridge, as you've heard us say many times, to greater supply. So make sure that we have that supply out there. The pace of releases for October and November uh, 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 tapered off just a bit. Uh, but again, we are, you know, we want to make sure that it matches, that the supply matches the demand. So we're not saying that we're going, we're trying to bring down the price down to $70. That's not what we're trying to say. You heard the president mention how it's an incentive uh, is what he's trying to put forward. So what we're saying is that if, the, if it goes to $70, oil companies should know that the United States government will come into the market as a buyer. And so that will create more certainly for companies uh, as, as they weigh increasing investment. We are giving them further incentive to increase production. Of course, uh, you know, we refrain the flexibility to replenish at any market price, but we wanted to cl clearly signal to producers that we will continue the market, uh, to support the market in this price range. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, to what extent does the White House and the administration feel the announcement today will actually counter uh, the announcement we heard from OPEC and Saudi a few weeks ago to cut oil, uh, oil output? Do you expect it to partially offset uh, that decision? Do you expect today's announcement to completely offset that decision? So, look, what we're trying to do, and we have said this many times, is prices are too high, and we're trying to make sure uh, that we lower those prices for gas, for other gas prices, even though we have taken uh, these actions uh, these past several months uh, with the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Uh, again, Putin's ongoing war, uh, the president uh, wanted to make sure that he completed the 180 million barrels the president announced earlier uh, this year. And also, as you know, the, as he also said, the Department of Energy is going to take actions uh, as well. Look, it is very important uh, that uh, uh, that the president, he feels, uh, gives American families a little bit more breathing room uh, and keeps to his promise that he's made for the past uh, several months uh, to do everything that he can in his power uh, to bring down uh, gas prices for the American people. Would you, would you describe today's action as a counter uh, to um, the decision from OPEC and Saudi? I would describe uh, the president's uh, actions today as a continuing, the continuation of his promise to the American families to bring gas prices down. He feels that they're still too high, even though we have seen them come down for 98 consecutive days, which is a historic decline that we have not seen in over a decade. And so he, this is, again, a continuation to his promise to the American. A quick follow-up on the, on the uh, reserve uh, refill that the President spoke about at $70. How long does the administration expect that to take? Um, I mean, any internal estimates, especially because there is a price gap? Uh, of, of, of $70 now set. Are there any internal estimates on the time, timing that you expect this I don't, to be? I don't have a timeline for you at this time. Look, the president, as he said in his remarks, that he sees this as an incentive uh, for oil companies. Um, just on the president's message to oil companies today that they need to not prioritize profits at a moment when Americans are going through such a hard time. Uh, just curious whether he has recently spoken directly to any oil company executives to deliver that message. Well, it's a it's a good question. I don't have any uh, calls to read out to you, but you know, I think when the president speaks uh, at the podium and makes those comments, which he has made many times, that is speaking directly uh, to the oil companies. I'm pretty sure that they are they are listening and that they are hearing the president directly. Um, just on the uh, Pittsburgh event tomorrow and the grants that are being uh, officially announced uh, on the ground tomorrow, um, can you give us a sense of how these 12 states were chosen? Were there other states that applied? You know, what was sort of the criteria uh, used to ch choose these 12 states? So I will get the team to provide you with what the criteria were uh, in, in selecting the 12 states. I don't have anything to share at this time. I'm sure the president uh, will also share more tomorrow in Pittsburgh. And do you know if um, John Fetterman will be at the earlier Pittsburgh event? Uh, we'll share more 
of uh, where where um, who's going to be attending, as we always do, uh, the various events uh, when the president travels. I don't have anything for you right now at this time, but as you know, uh, John Fetterman will be with the president tomorrow. Um, just follow up on the guest again, uh, in a different direction. Um, when you say now that the Petroleum Reserve is here for this reason, mm -hmm. how long is this going to go on? Should, should, should the oil industry, should Americans presume that the reserve will be tapped for the duration of the Russia-Ukraine war? So or until first, it gets a certain first, price point? Let, first, let me, um, let me say a couple of things, because I think it's important for the American people to know. Uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve remains the largest strategic reserve in the world. Uh, there are more than 400 million barrels uh, of oil in the reserve, so I want to make sure that uh, folks understand that. And, I, and to, to my point, uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve was created for this time, for a moment just like this, when there is a supply disruption uh, that is, has been caused by Putin's war. This is why the reserve exists. I mean, we have been very clear. I don't have anything more to announce beyond the December uh, uh, extension that the president uh, announced, beyond the 180 million uh, 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 barrels of, uh, of uh, oil that we have announced very much earlier this year. And if we have, we're going to continue to monitor uh, and take a very close look of what's happening in the next several days, in the next several months. And when we have more to announce, uh, certainly the president will do that. I'm going to ask you, uh, there was a lawsuit filed today in a federal court in San Francisco against the Biden administration, actually against the president mm -hmm. and the National Archives for continuing to hold up the release of 16,000 documents related to the assassination of John F. Kennedy, alleging that the president is dragging his feet on the release. He signed a memo saying that they're supposed to be released in December this year. Uh, any response to the lawsuit, and does the president still plan to release allow the release of those documents. In so, summer. as you know, we don't respond to lawsuits from here. Uh, it is not uh, my place to do so. Uh, I can get more information on the, the documents for you to see where it is uh, in the process, but I, I won't be responding to a lawsuit yeah, from here. Trying I'm to not, hold up. I, I'm not aware of that. Again, I would have to uh, check in with the team to see where we are in that process. I'm curious if the president himself has ever asked to see them. Uh, again, I, I, I don't have anything to share uh, on the specific documents. I would have to check in with the team. And he's doing this visit to Pennsylvania tomorrow, making mm -hmm. one campaign stop. We heard again today that former President Obama is headed to Nevada now in November, uh, in addition to the stops he's making next week for Democratic candidates. Uh, there was no update on the President's political schedule yesterday and the day before. Any chance there's an update today? <laughs> We don't have anything to share with you on the president's travel, uh, and uh, we, be, we will be sure to share uh, any upcoming trips that the president may have in the upcoming days and weeks. Still in the works. Uh, again, I, I just don't have anything to preview at this time. We announced, as you know, he's going to go to Florida on November 1st, and if there are any other trips, you'll, you, will, you will hear from us, Ed. I promise you. I promise you. Go ahead. Um, how serious is the administration considering a ban on um, U.S. petroleum products? So um, everything is on the table. Uh, don't have anything right now uh, to preview. Clearly, our focus today is to uh, make sure that we uh, deliver on the president's promise, is to continue to lower gas prices for the American people. Uh, but again, I don't have anything to preview uh, at this time. And just on the G20, has the administration locked in a meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping yet? I don't have a meeting uh, or anything to preview for you at this time with a, pr with a meeting with the president. Hey, I have a foreign policy question, but first I wanted to follow up on something the president said earlier. Uh, he said that he's ready his team to look for other opportunities for further releases. Do you have a sense of what would spark a further release in the future? I know Europe is considering a, a, a ban or, or planning to implement a ban on Russian oil imports. Yeah, the president uh, asked his team to be on the ready in case there needs to be any more releases. Uh, don't have anything else to, to preview. Clearly, we're going to be monitoring uh, this the next several w weeks, the next several months, and when we have more to announce, uh, we will we will do so. Uh, I wonder also if you can comment on the arrest of our yeah of Saad Ibrahim Al Mahdi, his uh, in Saudi Arabia for sending tweets critical of the government. His son says he's been tortured and has accused the State Department of mishandling the case. 
So we can confirm the detention of Mr. Uh, Al Mahdi in Saudi Arabia and are closely following his case. We have consistently and intensively raised our concerns regarding this case at senior levels of, of the Saudi government in both Washington uh, and also in, in Saudi. We will continue to do so. The, the Saudi government understands the priority we attach, uh, we attach to resolving this matter. Uh, exercising the freedom of expression should never be uh, criminalized. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, back in 2020, when Congress was debating funding for replenishing the SPR, Democrats blocked it, saying it was a, a bailout for big oil. Why is it a good deal for taxpayers now? Well, right now we are dealing, uh, again, I laid out what the Strategic Petroleum um, uh, was created for. It was created for these moments, right? We're seeing a supply dis disruption, right? Uh, there is a, a war currently happening in Ukraine that was started uh, by Putin, a brutal war. And this is what these moments were for. When you see these global challenges, remember, this is a global challenge. Uh, this is not just happening here. Uh, it is affecting the global markets. And so this is an opportunity to do uh, what we can to help American families. I was referring to the the, the purchasing of the oil at seventy dollars per barrel. Oh, I'm 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 sorry. I thought you were meaning like why would we tap? Yeah. No, no, I mean, yeah. At a lower price. So can you say your question one more time so yeah, I heard back it in properly? Twenty twenty, when Congress was debating uh, funding for replenishing the SPR yeah. uh, at a low price. Democrats blocked it, saying that it was a bailout for big oil. But now, President so Biden said I, today that it would be a, a good Yeah, I know that. exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about when uh, Donald Trump was trying to sell it at $20 uh, per per, uh, per barrel to buy, to, yeah, to buy it. Look, it was a different time then. It was not the same situation that we are currently in. The reserve was close to full capacity at that time, and so there was no reason uh, to uh, to to you know to make that type of uh, repurchase. Yeah, earlier you pointed out that this isn't the first time that President Biden has called out the profits of oil companies. Uh, you know, a couple months ago it was talking about first quarter profits, now it's second quarter. And so at this point, does the president feel like oil companies are ignoring his uh, calls on this issue, the fact that they've continued to keep these profits? No, he he doesn't think so. They they actually they actually brought down uh, the prices. We have seen that in the past several months, but they need to come down more. And that's what the pre president is trying to make sure that continues to happen. Uh, and so, uh, he's again, he's not going to shy away from it. Uh, he wants to make sure that, as, as we saw in the chart, they did come down. They were able to do that. If you saw at the beginning of the chart, the prices yeah. did, they dipped, and it met, it met uh, what the retailers were paying. And so now uh, we're seeing the difference, that 60 cents difference. And so we want them to bring that to bring that down to meet where consumers are. And then House, uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, in an interview uh, posted today by Punchbowl News, said that Democrats need to improve their messaging when it comes to inflation over the next three weeks before the midterm. She calls uh, inflation a global issue and points out or argues that uh, because unemployment has decreased uh, under uh, Democrats and Biden, uh, that uh, inflation uh, has gone up. And do you, what's your response to the Speaker of the House saying that there is a messaging issue, that that message is not getting out to voters right now, as indicated by polling uh, that shows mm -hmm. that those who, uh, you know, have concern, voters that are concerned about the economy, inflation, are favoring Republicans over Democrats? So, uh, first, let me just say, Got to be mindful because of the Hatch Act on when I speak about. Uh, sure, I cannot speak. No, I, yeah. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get. Give me a second. I have to lay this yeah. out, right? Uh, it is my prerogative to say I don't want to make sure that uh, I uh, adhere to the Hatch Act. So I got to put that out there uh, as it relates to a messaging. Look. We have always been very clear. The president has always been very clear. We understand. Uh, I, I know you were talking about polls and what the American people are feeling. We understand what they're feeling. We understand that they are feeling a bit of a crunch uh, because of, of, uh, of cost, because of inflation. Uh, and that's why the president is doing what he's doing today. That's why he's making it very clear that he's taking extra actions to bring down the cost, uh, continue to bring down the cost of gasoline. You heard me talk about hearing aids, 30 million Americans are going to see now lower costs in, pur in purchasing hearing aids. When you think about the, the Inflation Reduction Act, it's going to lower costs. When you think about health care, when you think about energy costs, these are actually
actions that this president has taken. These are actions that he's taken with uh, congressional Democrats, and we're going to continue to speak to that. But we get it. We get that uh, Americans right now are feeling that pinch. But, you know, the other piece of this, too, is you have congressional Republicans who are doing the opposite. Uh, they don't want to give the health care costs, they won't bring down health care costs, they don't want to bring down energy costs. If anything, they want to increase uh, what Americans are paying with health care and with energy. And that's their plan. Their, their plan is to get rid of Medicare, their plan is to get rid of Social Security, and our plan is to make sure that we are protecting American families, that we are lowering costs, and we're going to continue to push that message and make sure that the American people hear directly from us. Thank you, Karim. Uh, the uh, football soccer World Cup starts in a month in Qatar. Mm -hmm. um, how does the uh, how does the White House feel about the many reports of human rights abuses uh, in that country, particularly in the preparation for this World Cup? And also, at what level will, from what level of government will somebody be sent there as a you know as a representative? So you know, your uh, last question first. We're still determining who will lead and join an official U.S. delegation uh, to the World Cup. Uh, we look forward to this important event, and of course, we will be cheering on Team USA from the White House. Uh, as you've heard from the President, he has said this uh, directly himself. He will always and will continue uh, to call out any uh, human rights abuses. Uh, that is something that he never shies away from, whether it is a leader to leader or whether it is uh, speaking about it outright. Uh, and so that will be something that he will continue to do. You wouldn't call it out in the sense of sending them a message by not sending a delegation or, you know, to watch sitting in one of these stadiums where supposedly people were, you know, horribly mistreated. I, no, I hear, I hear you. I, I answered the question as to he's going to, uh, you know, this is an important event and we're going to che be cheering on the team, uh, Team USA. Uh, it is not an unusual thing for us to do uh, when there is an event like this in wherever country, whichever country it is. Uh, but again, when it comes to human rights, uh, the president, uh, human rights abuses, the president will continue to call that out. Uh, this event is about our team, Team USA, is about, uh, again, a special event, and we're going to cheer them on. Thank you, Corrine. Um, you've condemned governors sending migrants to various cities across the country, but where should officials that are overwhelmed by the number of migrants coming into their cities and into their shelters, where should they send the migrants? Well, we have said many times before there's a process, a legal process, uh, and that we are willing to work with cities who are dealing with this issue. Uh, what we have seen uh, from governors is that they are using, uh, using migrants as a political tool. That's not the way to do it. Uh, and they're sending migrants, as we've seen the last several months, uh, the last several weeks, they're sending migrants without letting city uh, city officials know, without letting the federal government know. And what they do is they call uh, TV news stations to be there to capture this moment and use it as a political stunt. And so we are we will continue to call that out, but we are willing, we are willing and open uh, to work with cities that are dealing uh, with this issue, as we have done with New York City, as we have done uh, with Washington DC and other and other cities as well. But does President Biden want more migrants to come to Delaware? I don't even un understand that question, but I'll move on. Go ahead. Thanks, Karina. I'm wondering if you have a response to these videos first published by the Tampa Bay Times this week that show uh, people in Florida who had been convicted of murder or, or sex offenses uh, being released from prison apparently thought they had the right to vote and had now been arrested for doing so. Yeah, we have seen uh, we have seen those those videos. Uh, we have seen that reporting uh, by um, publication that you just mentioned. Uh, I want to be careful because I don't want to weigh, weigh in on any specifics ongoing cases in Florida. Uh, but the president believes that people. Who, uh, who are not incarcerated for a felony should have their voting rights restored automatically. And he has repeatedly called on the Senate to pass comprehensive voting rights legislation that would do just that. Go ahead. Thank you, Karine. Uh, two questions on two different subject matters. First, high gas prices. Has uh, the President of the White House ever considered summoning these oil and gas company executives here to the White House so that President Biden can deliver some of the message that he delivered earlier in the Roosevelt Room. Well, as you know, uh, the Department of Energy has had about uh, several meetings, a couple of meetings with uh, oil companies to have conversations uh, on what we can do uh, to, uh, to, to help 
in lowering prices uh, and to help with um, uh, with the issue that we just laid out today and how you know oil companies are not meeting or not lowering they're getting the profits but not lowering their prices so we've had several meetings uh, we had White House officials who have also attended uh, those meetings as well uh, don't have anything else to preview or to add to that but we have been in close touch uh, with these oil companies okay, and, uh, also on Ukraine as you know uh, there's been bipartisanship in terms of supporting uh, Ukraine financially uh, and militarily over the course of the past year since February 24th. Yesterday, the leader for Republicans in the House, Kevin McCarthy, said, if Republicans take over the House, don't expect a blank check. That's the way he put it, in terms of supporting Ukraine. What's your response to that? So as you know, the United States has provided uh, Ukraine with robu robust bipartisan uh, support as Russia wages this brutal war, this unprovoked war on the people of Ukraine. We will continue to work with Congress, uh, as we have these past several uh, several months, on these efforts and support Ukraine as long as it takes. And that is a commitment that the President made uh, to President Zelensky just last week when they had their one-on-one -on -one conversation, and also at the G7 uh, meeting with President Zelensky last week as well with our partners and allies. Look, we thank leaders across the House and the Senate, Republicans and Democrats, Democrats who are working with us to hold Putin accountable and support Ukraine uh, to defend itself from Russia's uh, crime and uh, atrocities. And so, again, we will uh, remain in close contact uh, with House and with House and, and uh, Senate uh, members. This is an important. Uh, we see this uh, uh, supporting Ukraine in their fight for democracy and their fight for freedom uh, as an important uh, moment in time. So you expect bipartisanship, regardless of who controls Congress. As We're to Ukraine funding. Well, I, look, I'm not going to get into hypotheticals from here. What I'm saying is uh, we uh, appreciate the bipartisan support that we have seen these past several months, and we will continue to work uh, with House and Senate members uh, to make sure that uh, the support that we are giving uh, the brave people of Ukraine uh, that continues. I've got a question about the upcoming uh, meeting with uh, the President of Israel next week. Uh, the Israeli government once again reiterated its sort of position that it won't send uh, direct weapons to uh, <coughs> Ukraine, preferring humanitarian aid. Given the situation, given Russia's action, given the increasing implication of Iran in, in this war, is this something that the president is going to push with his Israeli counterpart when he meets <coughs> with them, push for the Israelis to maybe help more militarily the Ukrainians? So I would refer you to the government of Israel for, for more on their decisions. Uh, not something that I would uh, comment from here, but the president looks forward to, to welcoming uh, the president of Israel to the White House on October 6, 26, as I uh, announced yesterday, for a visit that will underscore the enduring partnership uh, between the United States and Israel. I, I, I'm not going to get a, ahead of any specific issues uh, the president plans to raise, but I can confirm they will consult on a variety uh, of issues, of key uh, issues, including opportunities to deepen Israel's regional integration and ways to advance uh, equal measures of freedom, prosperity, and security for both Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, again, when it comes to their own uh, government decision, I would refer you to them. Okay. Thank you, Kareem. So you're asking oil companies to further lower gas prices. What makes you think that they are going to listen to an administration that is ultimately trying to put them out of business? How, how is the administration trying to put them out of business? Well, they produce fossil fuels, and this president says he wants to end fossil fuel. So look, um, I, you kind of asked me this question yesterday, and here's here's where uh, where we would say U.S. oil production uh, is up and on track to reach a record high next year. We've seen that from their uh, uh, from when we see their profit margins. They are uh, they it, you know they're, it's record high. And so, in fact, the United States has produced more oil in President Biden's first year than under Trump's administration's first year. But at the same time, oil companies are raking in record profits, uh, while more than 9,000 approved drilling permits remain untapped by the oil industry. There is no shortage of opportunity or incentive uh, for oil companies to ramp up production. This is something that they can actually do. It is available to them. They can do this. And also, they are getting the profits. And so, because they're 
we're getting, we, I just showed 60 cents uh, at, on the chart, uh, more profit, right, that they, that we're seeing, higher, more higher costs that we're seeing that what, than uh, what uh, retailers are paying at the pump. They can bring that down. They've done it before. You saw that at the chart in the beginning. They were able to bring uh, prices down. And one more that folds in the president's top domestic priorities. In Georgia, the president's endorsed candidate for governor, Stacey Abrams, is suggesting that one, may, one way to mitigate the effects of inflation is to get an abortion. Does President Biden agree? Uh, I did not see her comments on this, so I don't know the context of this. Again, I want to be careful because this is a political debate, uh, and it, it's related to a midterm, an election. Uh, so I, this is, I'm not going to comment on that. Okay, I'll go to the back. Go ahead. Thanks, Green. Yeah, thanks, Green. Um, so the FTC has so far has found no signs of wrongdoing or price gouging within oil companies. So I'm wondering why the president still continues that narrative. Because we're seeing it from the chart. And oil companies were able to do it before, as I just stated to Peter. Uh, we're seeing a, a, a 60 cent gap. Uh, between where uh, uh, where their profit are and what what uh, people are paying at the pump, and so they can bring it down. They've done it before, uh, and so the president wants to make sure that uh, that uh, the profits that oil companies are making is also being uh, you know their their profits is is being uh, afforded and given uh, to uh, to the American people. So we've heard you say that, that the president believes there's not going to be a recession or could not, might not happen. But a growing number of business folks who are outside this building, Jeff Bezos uh, yesterday joining Jamie Dimon, Goldman Sachs CEO, why are they wrong then? So, uh, look, the president has said this, and I'm going to say this here as well. Uh, what he wants the American people to know is because of, of uh, the resilience uh, of the economy and, be, and because of the, our economic plan, we are in a better place to deal with these global challenges, to deal with uh, global inflation uh, than any other uh, you know, global major company, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, major uh, country in, in the world. And we are in a stronger position uh, to na navigate through these global challenges. We see jobs. Jobs are up. jobs are up. We created 10 million jobs. We we see uh, and uh, uh, we see that uh, you know unemployment rate is at the lowest that we've ever uh, had or had in a while in historic lows. And because of those pieces of data that I just laid out, we think we are in a stronger place uh, than we have been uh, uh, than we have seen when you when we talk about a re recession, what leads to a recession. And so uh, look. Uh, again, uh, the president was very clear. Uh, he doesn't anticipate there being a recession because of those da data points that I just laid out. Okay. Thank you, Green. Uh, a couple of summit questions and then one on Iran, if I may. Uh, the first one is on the G20. Can you speak uh, about what the president is trying to do in terms of rallying support for Ukraine in that forum? And on that note, can you confirm reporting that the White House is trying to ensure that President Biden does not bump in into President Putin should he attend the summit. We still don't know whether he's attending the summit or not. That's my first question on the summit. Those reports are not correct. They're not true. What about what he intends to do in terms of rallying support for Ukraine at the G20? The president, uh, as he rallied, support, he has been rallying support for U Ukraine these past several months, as you have seen. He was on the, he was on uh, the phone with G7 and also uh, President Zelensky last week. Again, rallying support. Uh, I don't have anything specific to share about the G20 and what that uh, it could or might look like. So uh, won't get ahead of of our plans. Okay. And then on the APEC summit, can you confirm local media reporting that Vice? President Harris will be attending the APEC summit instead of President Biden um, and respond to criticism that the forum is not considered important enough, especially because the president would already be in the region and also concerned that President Xi Jinping might dominate the forum. So we, we don't have any travel announcement to announce at this time. Look, we are, of course, uh, consider the forum important. That is why uh, the United States will be the host of the Ape uh, APEX in 2023. So clearly that is important to the president. That is important to us. It is a top priority for the Biden-Harris administration to serve as a strong, reliable partner to APEC e economies and identify common ways to replenish, uh, to unleash uh, economic opportunity, prosperity, and growth for us all. So again, this is uh, important to the president, but I don't have anything to announce as far as any travel. Thank you. And then one last one on Iran. Can, uh, is the administration aware that Iran has sent military personnel to Crimea 
to train Russian military personnel on Iranian drones. And on that note, can you also uh, enlighten us or share anything on the discussion of Iranian arms transfer to Russia that's being raised by the U.S. and allies at the U.N. Security Council today? So on those reports, I don't have anything here uh, to share or confirm. Uh, look, uh, we have said for months that uh, Russia had plans uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, turn, to turn to Iran, and that is what we're seeing for support. And so it's another sign of how brutal uh, Putin is willing to be and how isolated uh, he is, along with Iran. The president spoke to this. Uh, one of your colleagues asked him a question uh, about the martial law. And he, he talked about uh, the brutality that Russia is trying to, uh, is trying to uh, you know, uh, put onto Ukrainian, the Ukrainians. And uh, what we're continuing to see is how uh, bravely the Ukrainians are, are, are fighting, are fighting for their freedom and fighting against the, the Russians' uh, aggression. Aggression, but it's it's not going to change the course of the war. Uh, we are going to continue to support Ukraine and and continue to provide them with security assistance as long as it takes, because we understand how important it is for them to fight for their sovereignty, how important it is for them uh, to fight for their democracy. Thank you, Trade. Um, the U.S. Census Bureau said recently that adults in roughly one-third of households with infant children that use formula had trouble finding it. Obviously, the administration has taken a number of steps over the last several months to try to address this shortage. Uh, why is the shortage still ongoing after so much time, and what more can be done? So, look, the president and his administration has um, um, has taken actions, as you know, uh, through the last several months uh, to make sure that uh, we have progress to address uh, this current this issue, uh, this issue uh, f uh, that is currently happening right now, and also to avoid any f future issues. Uh, as you know, we've ramped up the domestic uh, production, uh, which including invoking the Domestic Production Act, which has allowed companies to increase production. And as a result, U.S. infant uh, formula production year to date has outpaced the 2020 level. So we have seen uh, some improvement. We understand that there's more work uh, to be done. Uh, and uh, and so we're going to continue to work on that as well. Okay. Thanks. Uh, a couple questions on gas prices. Uh, the first is when the president announced his initial round of actions back in March, he said that that directly would contribute to a 10 to 35 percent, uh, 10 to 35 cent per gallon decrease in gas prices. Can you give the same or similar quantification here? And if not, what's the difference? Look, I'm not going to give a quantification here uh, at this time. Uh, look, what, the difference now is our uh, is that, uh, and the reason that the president made this announcement is Russia continues its aggression. It's continuing its, its war. And so the president took extra action uh, to deal with gas prices, even though that they have been going down. They're still too high. Uh, and so the president, again, is going to continue to keep his promise to the American people to lower cost uh, at the pump. And not just that, lower health care costs, lower energy costs. Uh, we've, talked, we've talked about uh, the Inflation Reduction Act and what it's going to deliver and do for the American people. And so, uh, Look, this is something that the president takes very seriously. We talk about inflation. We talk about cost. Uh, he has made this a priority when we talk about his economic policy. And, uh, and so that's what you heard from the president today. And secondly, you know, earnings season is coming up. Uh, you're going to have a lot of these companies, the oil companies, reporting their earnings. Most likely, you know, potentially uh, announcing more buybacks. If that happens, again, another quarter, what's the consequence here? I mean, what more can the White House do here to prevent oil companies from just continuing to, you know, funnel profits to that. So, look, we're going to continue to have those conversations. As I mentioned, Department of Energy has been in touch with oil companies uh, on, a, on a pretty regular basis, that they've had that open door of communication. So that will continue. And you're going to continue to hear from, from the president. I, I don't want to get ahead of what might or might not happen. Uh, we have seen uh, the oil companies actually act before, very early on, to bring their prices down uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, that the, the, American, the, the American people are paying uh, what they should be paying at the at the pump, right? To make sure that the American people are not uh, are, are, uh, are are being given a little bit more of a breathing room, and so uh, the president's going to continue to speak out, and we're going to continue to do the work. Thanks, okay. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you.